Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna start a new project. This is a different house than what we've been working on. I say been working on, it's been right at a year since I posted a video working on the brick house or any videos related to the farm. Apologies on that. Uh, end of last year got pretty hectic and the house went on the back burner and as all of you know, the beginning of this year and up to right now, this year has been all kinds of crazy. So at this point, it's like, uh, better get to work doing something. I can't just sit inside and do nothing until all this blows over. So we're gonna get back to work. I really wish uh, it was a little bit later in the year and a little cooler, but uh, gotta work with what we got. So it's about 94, 95 degrees and about a million percent humidity here in South Carolina. I'm pouring sweat. Sorry I look gross already. It's about seven in the afternoon. I've waited all day to get cool. And this is probably about as cool as I'm gonna get before it turns dark. So, behind me, 1985 Fleetwood, if I recall correctly, double wide. I can't remember exactly what the manufacturer was, but I'm pretty sure it was a Fleetwood. Haven't looked at the title in a while. This is actually the house I grew up in. And it has set empty now for about six, seven years. So it's time to go ahead and rehab this house and make it a rental property, get it making me money instead of costing me money. Uh, we're gonna put the brick house on the back burner for a while because it's gonna be a way more involved project than this double wide to get rent ready. Uh, I've not done a full evaluation of this house. I've kind of looked it over and know of problems that have cropped up on it over the last six years that it's set empty after my mother moved out. And uh, the basic rundown is one, the roof is in really bad shape. We need to re-roof it. Uh, my old bedroom is where the AC unit attaches to the side of the house when they replaced that unit back in, I believe, 2004, 2006, when I was still uh, living in the house. Uh, they didn't flash it correctly, and we had some issues with the roof. And you may be able to tell, may not, there's a giant oak tree back here, and some of the limbs are hanging over the roof, which is a big, bad issue and we got some rot going on. So most likely you're gonna have to reframe uh, the exterior wall for the bedroom, uh, probably get into the roof structure, into uh, the rafters, hopefully not too terribly much. Hopefully it's still salvageable. I haven't started peeling back any of the layers or any of the shingles at this point because we've had a lot of rain and a lot of heat and I don't really feel like being on roof, uh, re-roofing. So uh, gonna try to put that off a little bit longer uh, I was just up there, first time being on the roof, and there are a lot of weak points in it. So at this point, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to re-sheave the entire roof along with re it. The shingles are completely destroyed. Um, we had a bad hail storm years ago, and uh, the roof didn't really get fixed from that. So there's tons of broken off shingles, blown off shingles, and they're just really worn and in uh, bad condition. They should have been replaced about probably 10 years ago. Uh, so that wall reframing, uh, fixing HVAC ducts because I'm pretty sure uh, rodents and things have gotten into the house being empty, have found droppings and stuff like that. Uh, the main issue with the house, uh, after my father passed away in 2004, my mother became a hoarder and uh, she hoarded in this house for about nine years. So I'm kind of embarrassed to show the inside of the house and I'm not planning to until I get a roll off container out here, big dumpster and shovel everything out of the house and get it pretty much gutted out. Uh, other than that, there's a couple drywall areas that need to be addressed. Uh, there's a couple of burst pipes that burst uh, two winters ago. So the water is shut off right now. Uh, luckily this is uh, more modern plumbing. It is not uh, the modern PEX, I believe it's the older, uh, I don't know if it was still called PEX, but it was the gray plastic tubing. Um, not a plumber, so apologies if I don't know the terminology, guys. Uh, but we're going to update the plumbing that we can get to that's damaged and needs to be repaired. Um, there is a few areas in the wall, like I said, that are damaged from... Um, quite honestly, me and my brother growing up fighting each other. And... Uh, <laughs> um, there's a place where the dogs shoot on the corner of the wall. So small stuff like that. Um, all the carpet's gonna get ripped out. It's this nasty old brown shag and it's disgusting. Uh, so probably gonna put a laminate flooring down, a laminate uh, hardwood, uh, something of that nature, maybe peel and stick vinyl, 
Again, I'm not renovating it for myself. It's gonna be a rental property. Uh, on the outside, we've got the old mobile home-ish um, T111. I don't think it's actually T111 on a mobile home. I think it's a different product. I'm probably gonna pull all the sheathing off of the walls and resheave with plywood and put vinyl siding on this house. As you can see, we do have a nice um, brick front porch. So it was a brick uh, back porch on the house. We did cover this about uh, 15, 20 years ago. The back is an enclosed back porch, so that's nice. We did put overhangs. You won't be able to see what I'm pointing to because it's out of frame. But we did put overhangs on the sides of the house. There are no gutters, so we're probably gonna put gutters or um, maybe make an overhang this way. There is a side door over here that enters through the utility room into the kitchen, and uh, there's a nice little covered area over it, but it's uh, fallen to the wayside. So a lot of little exterior things to be redone. Might go ahead and replace these windows. I'm not sure exactly what all is involved in putting full house windows into a mobile home. And again, all of this is speculative because I might get into this project and realize uh, this thing needs a bulldozer and it's not worth putting money into, uh, you know, make it a habitable property again. Uh, so with that said, today we're just gonna start out uh, pretty simple. Uh, we're gonna get up on the roof and we are gonna cut back all of those oak limbs that are overhanging and uh, try to bust up that big mound of rotting leaves that's over the portion of the roof that's leaking and uh, try to get a better look at what we've got going on and uh, just try to get those overhanging leaves off of there and the water damage uh, so it doesn't keep getting exponentially worse until we can put a new roof on the place. So let's go ahead, get up the ladder and uh, start cutting those tree limbs. So guys, apologies for shaky cam. I'm gonna go handheld up here just to give you a quick look around at what we got going on. As you can see, we got plenty of broken off shingle tabs folded backwards. And uh, as I said, this is the newer addition, this covered uh, section of the porch and this enclosed porch back here. Uh, we do have a fireplace, that's the chimney for that. That is the bathroom vent, uh, the bathroom vent pipe, the master bathroom vent pipe and the vent for the kitchen. Again, lots of broken over shingles, lots of soft spots. So this is what we're gonna be working on right now. Uh, this big oak tree limb where it is uh, basically sitting on this roof, not good whatsoever. So we're gonna cut all this back, throw it off the side of the house, uh, take the tractor and dump it off in the gully most likely. Um, here is the section I was telling you about. My old bedroom was back here on this back corner of the house. So nice and shady in the afternoons and the mornings. We got sitting leaves. We've actually got some plantation growing out of the leaves and decomposition. Um, a lot of shade from this oak tree limb, lots of water runoff, not a good combination to have. And uh, you know, not a good thing. We gotta get this roof in tip top shape before we go much further into this project. You might be able to see, probably not, but it's right in this section here. Uh, the soffit fascia, all that's rotten and hanging off. And uh, there's a window and the AC unit directly below there. And uh, it's just in bad shape. So let's go ahead and get the camera back on the tripod, get the chainsaws over here. We've got the Makita uh, 10 inch top handle, 18 volt. Just picked that up uh, two days ago at Home Depot. It was on a closeout for 149. I believe they had it for 199 with the spring promos. I uh, got the last one and we've also got the fresh back from the repair facility, our Milwaukee Fuel uh, pole saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them to use and let's get to it. So we're gonna be extra careful up here. One, not to fall off the roof. Two, not to fall through the roof. And three, not to put a limb or part of the tree through the roof. And yes, this is the first time using the Makita. And uh, so far, 
really impressed with it. Might do a review video on it at a later date. Looking much better already. Already got the limbs off that were contacting the roof. Well, now we need to get all this that's overhanging. So first impressions on this little Makita is it's pretty daggum stout for a battery powered chainsaw. Especially one that's 18 volt. I believe they've got a 36 volt version as well. And I think they've got a 10 inch a 16 inch and maybe a 12 inch in the 36 volt version of this top handle saw. So, Got to be careful not to let these limbs fall down and hit the roof because it probably wouldn't take much some of these areas for them to puncture right through and that's one thing I don't need right now. to be real careful of my footing. Don't want to get too close to that rotten area over there. I've yet to try to walk on it to see exactly how mushy it is. This part here is going to be pretty tricky. That's a pretty heavy section of limb and I don't want it falling onto the roof, but so I can't really stand under it to cut it. So I guess I'm about to cut it into really small pieces with the pole saw and just hope it doesn't uh, puncture the roof. And I uh, can use the convenient little hook to grab them and drag them back up to me. Probably should have brought the M18 fuel leaf blower up here to blow this crud off of the roof.
This is where it starts getting tedious. Get back to the real big thick part of the limb and uh, gotta take her in little bite-sized chunks. I can only grab so much one-handed, especially while balancing on a roof. Perfect. Didn't hit the AC unit. That one hit the plenter. It's all right though. It's built like a tank. It's fine. I'm really glad I did not hire this job out. I uh, contacted some tree companies because I thought this was going to require a bucket truck, but uh, luckily pretty easy with the uh, fuel pole saw and this Makita handheld 10 inch. Now this roof can finally breathe. Oh, there's even some moss growing back here. I have to get the camera over here and show you guys. Much better. This is the fun part, the, the bad part is when I got to pick up all this stuff and haul it away. If only that was uh, not the case, if I could just cut and have fun and not have to clean this mess up. I'm 
I'll call that a win. All right, guys, I think that'll get it. Uh, like I said, I should have brought the leaf blow up here to blow all this sawdust off. Uh, but we're in much better shape than we were before I started. And here's that patch of moss I was talking about. Got a couple of little green patches of moss up here. Not good. So here's a better look. There's a better look at that rotten fascia above that window. Uh, so all that's going to have to be pulled out and reframed and corrected. But uh, now that we got some uh, nice sunshine back here, hopefully it'll dry out and won't uh, keep going and rotting at such a rapid pace. Still afraid to walk over there. I might uh, stick my big toe on it and uh, just see how squishy it actually is. But uh, other than that, I think we're pretty much good. We got this tree right here I need to cut down. Probably do that uh, once we get back down. Here's where the fun begins. All of this. And all of this. And some back on the poor Plymouth back there. But, uh, you know, that's why they call it work. So let's get back down off of this roof and uh, start packing in for the day. All right, guys, I cut that tree down off camera because it is really growing up and snaky out here. And uh, I'm wearing shorts, so I didn't want to be over here very long, but got that tree down, as you can see. It was holding moisture against the siding there, and we got some rot under that bathroom window. So another reason why I want to resheathe and do vinyl siding on the house, but uh, Got plenty of tractor work to do over the next couple of days. Like I said, um, I'm either planning to buy a dump trailer or uh, get a roll off, but uh, the amount of trips at $500 a roll off, uh, I can get a really nice seven by 14 uh, dump trailer with a 14,000 uh, GVWR, so. I think in the long run, between re-roofing both houses, cleaning both houses out, and other things on the farm, it would probably be in my best interest to go ahead and buy my own dump trailer. Uh, much uh, better, obviously, and uh, also counts as a tax write-off for the farm, so another plus. All right, guys, that'll do it for our first video on the double-wide renovation. Um, I know we didn't do a whole bunch, but uh, like I said, I need to clean the uh, trailer out first before we get to work on the interior and on the roof. I want to get it cleaned out so I know uh, exactly what I've got to work with so I can go through and fully inspect what's here and if it is even worth saving. Uh, if it's not, then uh, the two tractors are going to go ahead and flatten it out so I don't have to pay property tax on it this year. So. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.